Welcome to the McKinley Diaries, 21 years on with myself, Nigel Vardy. We're now on day 11, the 10th of May, 1999. And after the exertions starting up the call wire yesterday, we decided to take a rest day. We were completely exhausted from yesterday's antics and decided to stay in bed. Not one person stirred until 10.30. And when we did, we noticed just a weak sun and light, silent, powder snow falling outside. So this was a day to refill with food, restock ourselves, get ourselves organised, relax and get ready for the next days to come. I decided to take a bath. Now, that doesn't sound too hard for most people at home. You know, you just pour the water in and jump. We can't really do that on the mountain. But what we do take are one of the most wonderful things ever invented in mountaineering, baby wipes. Now, you've got to remember that, like everything, they will freeze like a brick in your tent at night. So they have to come inside your sleeping bag with your cameras and your water bottles and your toothpaste and anything you want to remain liquid. If anybody uses contact lens and you need solution, the whole lot has to come in with you, or I assure you, it will be like boilerplate the next morning. Basically, what we'd do is I'd sit on top of my sleeping bag, strip down and wipe myself off from head to foot, completely cleaning my body, um, particularly the sun cream out of my face. And uh, it says here, I felt so much lighter and better and less smelly for it. Breakfast turned into brunch, dinner turned into tea, and Steve made an amazing array of food from spicy scrambled eggs to fried bangers and mash. Sounds all right to me. Outside, there was still some cloud in the air, uh, but it was a little bit warmer in the day, and I chose to go out and at least stretch my legs. I've sat in tents before for five or six days in storms, and it's just horrible. You do actually have to get out once in a while and stand up and stretch and get off your back. Um, unfortunately, the sun hardly burst through all day, but that's just the way it was. Um, but what we were trying to do as well was um, spend a day resting and drying some of the boots out. We had suffered some damp in our footwear, and that can be a really tough thing to do. Now, the boots themselves were these great big clumpy things. My grief, these are heavy. These were the mountain boots of the 1990s, um, big, heavy plastic boots with liners um the last time i wore these was on mckinley these were actually taken off me in hospital at the end uh, and on top of the boots we also wear a pair of these things uh, neoprene over gaiters uh, just to give you some extra protection insulation and it stops you know um, snow and stuff getting down into your boots and you put your crampons on top of those well we tried all kinds of things to get the inners drier um you know you haven't got a fire uh, there was no real sunlight um, we sort of sat with them, put hot bottles of water in them while we were making things, anything really to try and um, get them better. And I found in the end is using them as a pillow and sticking them in your sleeping bag at night actually helped. Uh, the American group um, did uh, join us and uh, they ascended some of the ridge and they went up at 10.30 and were back down just before 8pm. So a much better effort than we'd done. Fantastic day, really. And as we got the 8 p.m. forecast from Annie, it sounds here like uh, the weather is improvement. It seems to be improvement, the weather that is. It's good for us, good conditions. Cloud is beginning to settle over camp in the evening, but it's been a silent day with very little wind. That's wonderful. And Tony eventually appeared from his tent once all day, uh, probably to go to the toilet, and then disappeared again, never to be seen. Well, this truly was a rest day and a very, very important thing too. We cleaned the kit, sorted ourselves out, got sort, you know, got cleaned, bodies cleaned, mentally done, rest our muscles and bones and get ready to tackle that cool war again tomorrow.